Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news out of Roseville, where we are learning of a second arrest in a shooting outside of a school there. We're told an adult is in custody following the shooting near Steelen Elementary in Roseville Middle School on Monday. Police say that an expelled 13-year-old boy was trespassing on school property with a gun and was trying to get into fights with students. A 40-year-old man intervened and he was shot. That man is recovering at the hospital. The teen was arrested shortly after after the shooting and we are working to learn more about this latest arrest so we will bring you updates as we get them. We are also following two breaking stories from the Justice Department this noon. Thank you so much for joining us and Rhonda Walker. Within the hour, the Department of Justice announced results of an investigation finding Louisville police have a pattern of violating civil rights. The probe was prompted by the deadly police shooting of Breonna Taylor. The report says the Louisville police discriminate against black people using excessive force and conducting searches based on invalid warrants. Taylor was shot and killed during a botched raid in 2020. And the Justice Department will review the Memphis Police Department policies on use of force in response to the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols. The review was requested by the city's mayor and police chief. Five officers face second degree murder charges for the death of Nichols after a violent arrest in January. Our other top story this noon, a push to repeal Michigan's right to work law takes a big step forward in Lansing. And a short time ago, state Democrats passed a package of bills out of committee along party lines. The House Labor Committee heard testimony on the bills that would undo the state's law that bans forced union membership and prevailing uh, wages set in 2012. Graham, Witnesses and lawmakers on both sides of the aisle weighing in this morning. In states across the United, in, across the United States that have limited collective bargaining rights, that that has led to a decline in pay, a decline in benefits, and a decline in safety standard, and, and, a, and an increase in workplace deaths even. It's illogical to think that you're going to have less cost in a project when you're raising the wages. And when I've, all the data that I've seen, and I've got the hard data, mm -hmm. that that's not true. The bills now move to the House floor where the committee chair said that he is expecting to have a full vote by this safety, afternoon. Now to a dangerous building on Detroit's west side that is now coming down. That building was close to collapsing and leaning over a sidewalk. It's at the corner of Linwood and Blaine Streets near West Grand Boulevard. Sean Lay has been following this story and Sean, you were there today for the demolition. And the big picture here, Rhonda, is that the city is going after dangerous buildings citywide. This one in particular, huge building built in 1920, was leaning over towards Linwood Avenue about to collapse. I want to show you, though, it's right next door to a very busy daycare, this brand new, beautiful city park. And it was a danger indeed. The city now going after dangerous buildings and then billing the people who buy these things and let them become a dangerous building. They're going to knock them down and bill people. Here's the latest. Down comes a dangerous building here on Linwood, privately owned by a Shelby Township resident, but left to rot and became a danger in this neighborhood on Detroit's west side. But what you are looking at is much more than the demolition of just one building. The city of Detroit now embarking on an aggressive plan to bring down dangerous buildings all across the city and go after the owners who allow their buildings to become dangers to the neighborhoods here. American Rescue Plan federal funds are being used for the projects here. A Detroit firefighter saw how this building was on the verge of collapse. It could have fallen on someone driving by or someone on the sidewalk. The firefighter alerted us. We alerted the city just last week and now the building is coming down right now. Well, it's a danger. It needs to be taken care of. Glad to be taken care of. That's Curtis Johnson, owner of Inner City Contracting. He's got the job here to clean this up. A lot of environmental hazards in there as well. It all has to be disposed of uh, responsibly and safely. And eventually this will be a clear lot and safe for the neighbors here, the daycare and the park as well. Rhonda, coming up at 5 o'clock, much more on the city effort. The mayor mentioned it last night during the state of the city about 300 dangerous buildings they have pinpointed and they've got about $130 million from the American Rescue Plan to go after the buildings, but also bill people who live leave buildings like this.
Rhonda, back to you. Well, something the residents certainly appreciate, seeing progress there. Way to stay on it, Sean. Thank you. We do want to get to an update now to a shooting in the parking lot of Novi's Fountain Walk Shopping Center. Police are saying that a victim walked outside to find someone in his car and then got into a shootout with the person inside. The victim was shot in the abdomen and rushed to the hospital. He is expected to survive. Police are now looking through the surveillance video from that area, but are also asking anyone with information to please come forward. Investigators are looking into what caused a massive fire during the overnight hours and it destroyed a business in Gross Point Park. We brought you this as breaking news all morning. Crews arrived to find the flames shooting outside of the building on Charlevoix near Lake Point there in Gross Point Park. We are told that the building had not been open for the public for 20 years, at least this one unit of a larger strip there and was possibly being used for storage by someone. Firefighters say everything inside was making it more difficult to fight the fire, but thankfully, because of the firewall, it did not spread to the restaurant next door. We are getting new details about the four Americans kidnapped by a Mexican cartel and why they were in the border town. Two of them were found dead. Two others are now back in the United States. And as Morgan Chesky reports from Brownsville, Texas, it's now a stark warning to other Americans considering travel to certain areas in Mexico. It has been an incredibly active 24 hours here in South Texas. We've learned that those two surviving Americans identified by family members as Latavia Washington McGee and Eric James Williams are recovering or believed to be inside this South Texas hospital. Uh, meanwhile, authorities say they are still working on claiming uh, those remains of those two other Americans in Mexico. But authorities say that they are now digging into this investigation to try to find the individuals or group responsible. Mexican authorities have reported that at least one individual was taken into custody when these Americans were rescued, described by officials as uh, the man guarding them. We do know that the city of Matamoros and the state of Tamaulipas had been placed under a level four travel advisory by the State Department. That makes it very clear, stating do not travel there. They had even cited cases of kidnapping uh, and crime uh, as a, a motivating factor behind issuing that warning. Uh, right now, uh, authorities are waiting to hear the full story from these survivors. It will be incredibly important to hear their testimony of what took place as it could help investigators track down this group responsible. But as of right now, no individual, no group, no specific cartel has claimed responsibility for this horrific kidnapping uh, that resulted in the deaths of two Americans. Morgan Chesky, NBC News, Brownsville, Texas. What a horrifying ordeal for the four family members say that these four people made a days long trip from where they live in South Carolina. And the reason they were in Mexico is because one of them was getting a cosmetic medical procedure. Lawmakers in Lansing will hold a hearing on mass power outages that the state of Michigan has seen following the last few winter storms. The Energy Communications and Technology Committee will hear testimony from leaders at DTE and Consumers Energy. The hearing is set for March 15th, one week from today, and the chair of the committee says that the goal is to figure out what needs to be done to help the power grid.